You can now get Womanies in separate volumes. Get volumes one, two, or three at your convenience and get a $297 credit for each one of them toward Womanies volume four. Get all three volumes by Valentine's Day and volume four is free. Links in description. As I've come up with a few of the most diabolical strategies that women use the most when lying to their boyfriends or husbands. Here's one. Quote, I confessed, but at least I was honest. Stay with me here. This is a lie that I have experienced many, many times, and I, I didn't start to recognize it until a few, until, God, a few years back. The way this works, guys, is that your girlfriend, your wife, your side chick, buddy, whoever, comes to you and tells you something to this effect. Well, actually, just your girlfriend or wife, people you're in a committed relationship, they tell you something to this effect. Hey, I ran to my ex at the mall yesterday, and all we did was talk. It was a very short conversation, and we went our separate ways, but I wanted to be upfront with you and tell you that I saw him because I don't like keeping things away from you. And even if you get mad about it, she can fall back on with, hey, at least I was honest and told you about it. I could have not said anything. And at that point, you fall back. Now, men who aren't aware of this strategy not only think that his woman has done him a favor by admitting she had an interaction with her ex, he actually thinks he can trust her now. Because in his mind, not only did she tell him about running into her ex without having to ask her or quiz her on it, on her whereabouts, she told him about it even though she didn't have to. He's thinking he can definitely trust her now because she was honest about something she didn't have to be honest about. He told her something, or she told him something, he could have never found out about, but because of her perceived faithfulness and fidelity, he trusts her now more than ever. That particular situation happened to me a few years back, when I was casually dating this chick. Almost word for word, and even as a male at the time, I, bought her, I still bought her story. Now, part of the reason is that even though I liked her a lot, I was seeing another chick at the time, so I wasn't really concerned, right? But it did make an impression on me, so I started to give her a little bit more of my time and attention. Well, a few weeks later, out of nowhere, she tells me her and her ex are getting back together, and they're going to give it a try, which means she was already sleeping with him by the time she told me. All women do this, guys. It's their MO. That story about running into her ex at the mall, it was more than that. And because she told me with, without me having to ask her, I bought that that was all there was to the story. The point is, guys, is that this chick lulled me into a false sense of security by making me believe that I could trust her because she told me something she didn't have to, right? She told me something she didn't have to without me quizzing her on it. I never found out what really happened at the mall, but knowing women like I do, it wasn't just a short conversation. That interaction was likely the beginning of them getting back together. She knew it as soon as she saw him. And for all I know, that story that she made up might have just been a complete lie. I mean, for all I know, she may have been sleeping with him before she even confessed about this interaction between them and just wanted to lay the groundwork for when she told me that they were getting back together. And to her credit, it worked. I had no inkling that she and her ex were, were, were getting back together. I thought they just coincidentally ran into each other, exchanged pleasantries, said their goodbyes, and kept it moving. Obviously, that was not the case. Now, on the funnier side, <laughs> Devin has actually done this to me on occasion right? She'll say, Donovan, I had a slice of butter bread at work and I felt guilty about it, but I wanted to tell you and be upfront with you. But it wouldn't surprise me if I found out that she had butter bread, a chicken quesadilla, which is one of her favorite foods, and a bagel. Now, she won't admit that now, but, you know, Sundays are our way days. And if she gains weight, that's when she'll confess and tell me what she really had. She'll tell me the entire truth, right? And it better not be, you know, uh, I had a chicken quesadilla and two slices of pizza every day. Obviously, I say that in jest because she knows I don't tolerate that kind of deviation in her diet, but the concept is the same. She proactively told me a very small part of the truth to hide the rest of the real truth. Gentlemen, understand this one immutable truth. Women never, and I mean never, volunteer disparaging information about themselves unless it benefits her in some way. And it's usually because she is trying to divert you from finding out the whole truth. So if your girl comes out of the blue and admits something to you, guys, you can bet the family jewels there is more to the story than that and that she's just telling you that to throw you off the scent. Women never tell you the whole story, especially when they volunteer information. Never forget that. Here's another way that women like to lie. I call the that's not 100% true lies. Stay with me. A buddy of mine in Reno was dating this girl. He's 20. He was 27. She was 22. Both very good looking people. 
Uh, he's an above, you know, he was an above average shape, great looking guy. She was really hot. She was like an eight and a half, nine, big boobs. And her youth didn't, and, and, you know, she had big boobs. And because she was young, her didn't sag, right? Big, perky boobs, beautiful face, great body, dark brown hair. She was hot. So anyway, I remember a while back when I was in Reno, he calls me up and says he's ready to be done with her. He suspected that she may have been cheating, but he couldn't prove it. But he said he was going with his instincts and wanted to end it before the hit the fan so we meet up at this casino we had a few drinks and he's telling me about the times that he had quizzed her on her whereabouts who she was with who she was what she was doing etc like all women do they lie and say i was with a friend or i was here or there or i didn't have my phone or my phone died blah 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 blah. now at this point i was starting to get bored because i hear these stories all the time right nothing women do nothing a woman does surprises me anymore so i'm sitting there with a friend he's telling me the same story that other friends have told me again and again. You get numb to that. You get bored. You start paying more attention to the game, you know, maybe on TV at the bar. So he continues and says something to this effect. He says, I put two and two together. Then I'd confront her and I tell her what I thought she was up to. And she always denied it again. Nothing new there. Girls never admit what they're cheating when they're cheating. But then he said this to me, he said, and every time I brought this stuff to her attention, She'd say, hook me up to a lie detector test, and I'd pass it. I'm telling you, that's not what happened. So then he responded with, well, what did happen? And she'd respond with what we now know to be fake anger and outrage and hurt and say, well, not that. And because he didn't want to upset her further, he would just drop it. So I asked him, well, what did you think happened? Then he tells me what he thought happened, and he did it with great detail, like with timeline and everything. And I said to him, this is, this is awfully detailed, dude. Are you sure about this? Then he took out his phone and showed me screen grabs of their text conversations and her postings on Facebook. Essentially, guys, he was cross-referencing what their interactions were with her Facebook postings to come up with a timeline and what she was doing and all the rest of that. Now, as a side note, we know Facebook can't be trusted. As I talked about, Jesus Christ, way back in episode 83. How, girl, how girls are now helping each other cheat. You guys definitely need to check out that episode. If you want to know how far women go to cover up their cheating, how diabolical they really are, guys, it's going to blow your mind. And I'm not even close to exaggerating. Episode 83, it'll be, it'll be back on, it'll be on my Patreon in a few weeks. Anyway, so he gives me this detailed series of events. And I said to him, dude, there's no way she can deny this. I said, this is like a DA's case against an accused murderer. And he says, yeah, I know, but she always denies that it's true. And then it hits me. When he confronted her with this, there was so much detail. All she had to do was find one part of his accusation that wasn't completely accurate. And that's what gave her the confidence to deny the whole story and even take it one step further and say, strap me to a lie detector. So for example, let's just, let's just use an example. Let's say you suspect your girlfriend of cheating and catch her in a lie. Let's say she's going to one place, but you find out that she was somewhere else. Let's say she told you she was going to her friend's house. So you see on Facebook, she's at her friend's house, but a little bit later on, you see her drinking. You see her drinking a latte on Instagram, right? Pay attention, guys. So when you see her again, you say, you lied to me. You said that you were going to your friend's house, but instead you went to Starbucks so you could meet up with Kevin. She'll tell you, nope, that's not what happened. And she will say it with all the confidence knowing full well that she definitely cheated on you. What really happened, and pay attention, guys, what really happened is that she stopped by her friend's house for maybe five minutes. Then she went off to Pete's Coffee, not Starbucks Coffee, and met up with Kevin, who took her home and pounded her out. Now, some of you might be thinking, uh, Donovan, he nailed her. He caught her in a lie, and you would be right. But here's where girls get out of this stuff. When he confronted her with facts, He says she went to Starbucks and not Pete's. And that's the opening she needs. Now, obviously, that's a detail that doesn't really matter because the greater point is that she cheated on him. But girls will use the fact that you got the coffee shop wrong as an excuse to deny the entire story and be confident about it, which makes you question whether or not your intel was wrong or that your instincts are messed up. Another way they do this is omission or addition. So using the same example that I just told you, you'll say, you lied to me. You said you were going to your friend's house, but you went and slept with Kevin instead. She'll deny the story because you left out her stop at the coffee shop. 
You could also say, well, you lied to me. You said you were going to your friend's house, but you probably stopped there to get condoms and then went to Starbucks so you can meet up with Kevin. Again, she'll deny it because Kevin had the condoms. She didn't have to go get them. The point is, your woman will always deny wrongdoing if you confront your woman with what you think happened because she'll find something, a word, a phrase, your tone of voice, anything she hears that technically makes the story factually inaccurate, at which point she can say, nope, that's not what happened, and then go home and take a, and take a shower to wash all the off and out of her. Even though you said, even if you said you lied to me, you said you were going to your friend's house, but you didn't stay long, so you can go to Pete's Coffee meet up with Kevin and Sales. She'll still deny it because Kevin wasn't at Pete's. Kevin was in the parking lot waiting on her to text to let her know that she was on her way out. You see how girls do this? When you suspect that your girl is up to something, guys, there's no point in confronting her with what you think happened in terms of this series of events because she'll always find a way to make your version of events technically unfactual. I didn't say untrue. I said technically, factually inaccurate. And that's the margin girls will cheat in. The only way to confront your girl on something like this is to say, you said you're going to a friend's house. I wasn't there, so I don't know what happened, but I know what didn't. And that's not all that happened, and I know you're keeping something from me. And leave it at that. You guys are never, ever going to know the truth. You're never really going to know what happened. And when you throw around accusations and theories, you are opening up yourself to further deception. Do what my buddy did and just hit the eject button, man. Just because you didn't get 100% of the story correct doesn't mean she's not sleeping around. And men here know that if there's any chance she's cheating, you know she probably is.